Jinx Mortals, and welcome to another Our Bullshit Around video. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, insurance and healthcare in uh, America here. I'm going to touch on uh, why it's so bad, uh, why it's so expensive, and a variety of other things. So profiteering is a term that you have probably heard before, which is basically the idea of taking advantage of market uh, markets that are not actually susceptible to price. So war profiteering, as an example, is charging ridiculous amounts of money for food because you're in a war situation and famine is a problem. And so you are basically charging a million dollars for hay or something or grain. Probably not hay. People don't usually eat that. Um, but like charging ridiculous prices for bread and other basic things things that you need to live. Now, the same thing holds true for healthcare. So as an example, if you are going if I'm come in and I need a heart surgery, um, if you caught if you are going to charge me two thousand, twenty thousand, two million dollars, it's all the same to me. At the two million mark, I'm gonna need to go into serious debt, but if I can go into debt for it, I will. Because I have to or I'm dead. And not being dead is our primary driving instinct for all of our actions, <laughs> pretty much. So um, because of that, life-saving procedures are completely cost-insensitive. And because of the nature of uh, like most procedures in general, if, for instance, I have a broken leg, if my leg is not set correctly and I don't have things work properly if I don't get the proper rehabilitation for my leg, I'm going to be permanently disfigured and not be able to do my job. For most jobs, it's going to be made way more difficult, even if you don't have a physically intensive job. If you have a broken leg, just getting to work becomes so much harder. And it's such an economic, you know, and you know, quality of life and everything else like problem that it really doesn't matter what the price is for you know getting my legs you know fixed that it's not price sensitive so that's important to understand is that if an individual buyer is the one paying for their surgeries or whatever their life saving operations those things are completely insensitive to changes in price and this shows, if you look at the costs in America, the costs for different types of things. If you get a heart surgery in one place and in another place, there will be a thousand percent difference. So one place will be cost charging 10 times as much for the exact same procedure. Not because they have some super doctor, just because they are randomly picking their prices because there's no actual market. So in America, we like to think of like capitalism as being really awesome and perfect. But the fact of the matter is that there isn't a capitalistic market by default for healthcare. There is not. There's, you do not, because of the fact that people are being compelled so strongly to purchase, you don't have the option to not purchase. And you often do not have the option to shop around because if, especially if you're looking at like emergency room procedures er procedures you have to go to the nearest hospital because otherwise you die before you get there so for many many different types of things there is no actual capitalistic market because profiteering is not capitalism let's make this perfectly clear capitalism is not anarchy capitalism is a well-regulated market that the regulations are there to ensure that free trade happens, where the purchasers and the sellers are on even ground to find a middle ground price that works for everyone and a quality that works for everyone. That's the purpose of capitalism, is for the government to just put the basic frameworks in place so that the free market can happen. There's no free market if you have a gun pointed at one of the people's heads. Okay, and that is what healthcare companies have, is they are basically pointing a gun at your head and saying, well, you can either pay my price or you die. That is what healthcare does. 
So you cannot have a free market in healthcare unless you control it. And it has to be controlled in an interesting way. Now, in America, it's easy to argue, oh, but that's not true because you know nobody's paying for their own health care. The insurance companies are paying for it, and the insurance companies have a vested interest in paying less money. So since they have a vested interest in paying less money, they'll they'll haggle down the prices. And that would be true if not for the fact that the insurance companies are just taking a percentage off the top. They're just middlemen. What they're doing is they're averaging out the costs for everyone and then taking a cut of that and just managing the risk. It's a risk management company. They don't have a product. They're not selling you like healthcare. They're selling you risk management. So they're, they're just like a financial institution. And the, the problem with, you know, thinking that they have a vested interest in changing the prices is if they haggle down the prices, the prices are getting haggled down by every insurance company. Every insurance company gets the same prices. So there's they don't have a vested interest in reducing the prices for everyone because if they reduce the prices for everyone they're just reducing the prices for them and their competitors and leaving themselves in the same place because again the actual health care is not price sensitive the only thing that's price sensitive is which insurance company you go with so if you can haggle down the price so can your competitor why would you bother in addition because insurance companies so heavily rely on the fact that this is very complicated statistical analysis that's required to actually understand insurance, the customers do not understand what they are purchasing. No customers for insurance actually understand the full product that they are purchasing. The risk analysis that the, the customers are doing would require a much more imp like. You need heavy duty computing power and software to be able to actually analyze the differences between diff competing uh, insurance agencies. You really do. There's no simplistic way to analyze the product. It's just not, it's not like buying a loaf of bread, okay? It's not, ooh, this loaf of bread weighs 500 grams and costs a buck 50. This one weighs 1,000 grams and weighs two and costs two bucks. Which one's more cost effective? That's really easy to do. And sometimes it'll vary depending on how much you can reasonably consume before the bread molds. But it's very easy to intuitively understand how much, you know, which one of those is the better deal and why it's the better deal. With insurance, that's not the case. So price sensitivity for insurance, because so much of insurance is hidden costs, especially, there's no way to have real free market like competition there, even assuming that any price changes to one company would not just propagate to every single company, right? Like it's just, it's not the kind of market where like you're going to have like one company that has dramatically lower prices than everyone else. It's just, it's just not how it works. So as a result, you have a middleman who does not have a vested interest in reducing the costs because they're just transferring all of the costs to you as the customer so they don't give a crap and that's not because they're evil it's just because that's their business right it's it's important to understand that like if you don't have an actual capitalistic market it's no it's you can't determine what you should be charging so when it comes to um like healthcare costs as an easy you know thing how much should you charge for a knee surgery how much should you char charge for a heart surgery? And it's easy to say, oh, well, you should do it based off of how much it costs you to do that surgery. Bullshit. That's not how anything works in the world. You think this bottle of Mountain Dew has a price that's remotely based off of the actual cost of production? No, it's based off of what the market can stand. The problem is that if you have a, a market where the market will stand anything, there's no real fluctuation in demand based off of price there's no price sensitivity the whole capitalistic system falls apart it's not that they're exploiting capitalism it's not that they're profiteering and look how bad they are it's how do you determine a fair price 
you just can't do it because you know the customers are just not they're going to pay anything and the way that capitalism works is not that you you charge x percentage more than it costs you to make it right the the profit margins on different products are larger or smaller digital products have ridiculously high returns on investment and you know other like televisions and things like that have substantially lower margins all of these things are relevant and so it's not that any of these companies are evil it's just the fundamental nature of the market so and that includes the insurance companies even though they do all sorts of horrible things right that, don't get me wrong there are things that they do that are evil but the fundamental nature of them not being market sensitive it's not their job to regulate prices in the market it's just their job to average out the costs to everyone that's what they, their function is so in other countries you do have a significant player in the market who acts as a market stabilizer that stabilizes the costs of things across the entire market so as an example in singapore all all the you know healthcare is heavily subsidized by the government and as a result you can only you can only charge so much for healthcare in singapore because the government's not going to be willing to subsidize you if you do not charge a reasonable amount and granted i mean you know mostly it's government run hospitals for the most part that are uh the most heavily subsidized but in addition the government also is an insurance provider so in addition to giving subsidies and how much those subsidies are depend on who you are the citizens get the best permanent residents get very good and then people who are foreigners just get wow this is a lot cheaper than it is in america <laughs> so like um so it, it fluctuates dramatically so healthcare here for most people is effectively free so long as you go to like the the hospitals and the polyclinics that the government approves of um and if you go to like a private uh, clinic or whatever that the government does not approve then your your costs start to escalate dramatically but they're still governed by market forces because of the fact that the government is still a big player and they are in the insurance game so because the, the government is a big insurer you have an entity who actually cares because the government cares about the cost of health care for its citizens because unlike an insurance company who's perfectly happy to take whatever cut they can get right if they're going to take five percent it doesn't matter i mean they have a vested interest in the overall cost of the market increasing which is not good that you don't want to have one of the major players of the market have a vested interest in things getting more expensive uh but beyond that the government has a vested interest in the well-being of its citizens uh so because they have that actual vested interest if they are a major player it brings down costs it just fundamentally does because they can say this is an un unacceptable cost this is an acceptable cost and things start to get regulated and as soon as the prices have an actual buyer saying these are the limits of the market as soon as that happens the limits of the market start to get set and you you enter into an actual capitalistic system where buyer and seller are on even footing and they can squabble and fight with each other or whatever but they actually are on even footing so uh that it gives you an idea of why the american system is so completely off the wall and screwed up um in other countries that's not the case so in a, you know we, you see the data that like a lot of other countries have single payer systems where the government just pays for everything and they their health care is dramatically cheaper and, every, and they're getting better results because everyone is actually insured and stuff like that um, the reason for that is because you have the government acting as an influence now the the reason can also sometimes be that the costs are cheaper for example a doctor in singapore is a physician with a master's degree they they do not have a doctorate that's they're not the same thing right 
So you do have some people who have actual doctorates in Singapore, but you have other people who just have masters. But bear in mind that a doctorate, a master's degree at one of the top five universities in the world is pretty good compared to a doctorate from some, you know, just nowhere university in some random state in America. Um, so that's important to recognize is that the quality of the education here is so much better that having a master's degree here is probably substantially better than having a doctorate in America. Now, obviously, that's not true for everywhere in America, but most of the people with doctorates in America are not as well educated as the people with masters here in Singapore. Just going to go ahead and say that. Um, anyway, so having the government in the healthcare system in a serious way is important. And whether you want them to be a payer in the system or just heavily regulating the system is up in the air. I personally think that it is better for the government to be a payer in the system because as soon as they're a payer in the system, capitalism works pretty well. Okay, as long as everyone is, you know, on even footing and everything is, people are able to compete reasonably, capitalism works pretty well. And when you look at government competence in America in particular, the government is so bad at its job that I would not want them regulating the prices for um, that kind of stuff. I want them to just be forcing people to compete on price and saying, we're not willing to pay the ridiculous prices that you're charging because your neighbor is charging, you know, 80% less. <laughs> so why would we pay you this amount? It's ridiculous. Um, so as soon as they, they get into the market, it changes things. Um, so it's regardless of whether you're a Democrat or Republican, an independent, whatever, like whatever tribe you join in with, it's important to understand that we all want a system that works. And the American system does not work because it's just bad. Right. This isn't a left or right leaning video. Right. I'm I'm suggesting that the mark the market requires government intervention because of its nature, because of the profiteering nature of medical stuff. Right. It's just that simple. You cannot there, you cannot have a system like that and have individual payers doing it. And the individual payers are fundamentally doing it, regardless of whether you have a middleman in insurance. Because the middleman, again, isn't price sensitive. They just want this, the overall size of the market to grow because then they t take increased uh, revenues off of the increased uh, size of the market. So the greater the percentage of your wealth that goes into healthcare, the greater a percentage of your wealth that goes into the hands of the insurance company who's taking a cut out of every transaction. It's just that simple. Increased prices mean increased revenues for insurance agencies. So uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, remember, again, that, th you know, we have a lot of actors in play in these kinds of systems, and they're all doing what's best for them. And they are, generally speaking, not trying to act in illegal or immoral manners. Sometimes they are, and it's becoming more and more common in America to try to justify illegal and immoral behavior and that's a disturbing trend to be sure um like the it's it's a disturbing trend but it's important to recognize that generally speaking it's not about like controlling the evil insurance agency or the evil hospital profiteers or whatever it's really simple market economics right you just you need to have a market a real market before you can have any sort of reasonable pricing and quality. So let's get ourselves a competitive market. And the way to do that is to get the government involved in a serious way all around the country in healthcare. So thanks everyone for watching. And next time I will make a video on whatever I choose to make a video on next.